Welcome back, guys. Guess it's just me for now. Fran will be joining us soon. And uh, up next, we have our second winner's round. It's going to be Oskaka versus Life Coach. Just like the last match, the uh, the winner of this will advance to tomorrow's finals, and the loser will have to play the uh, the decider match. So um, I think if Life Coach loses here and then RDU wins his, I think it might be teammates against each other. I think, but uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, in terms of the comparison, Life Coach is, of course, running the uh, the G2 setup um, uh, quite definitively now that we've seen a lot of these games played. Uh, it, it is it is just the same decks that uh, they refined as a team and uh, decided to bring. So it's the uh, it's the very common druid that we've seen. Uh, fairly standard Dragon Priest. The, the highlights are that. Uh, the Dragon Priest brought by uh, the G2 team has the, the Wild Pyromancer. It has the extra heals. Uh, all three decks have two Earthen Ring Farseers, which uh, have so far, I think, uh, have been the uh, uh, really the, the redeeming cards out of a lot of these matches. And uh, the Warrior, uh, again with the Farseers, and the uh, Brothy Weaponsmith, uh, pulling in that little bit of chip damage that is missing from that deck. So the setup has been very successful so far. And uh, Oskaka on the other side, um, I don't know, uh, I, don't, I don't think he has had quite as much preparation as some of the G2 guys had, but uh, of course he's in the winner's bracket, he's been doing pretty well. He had a dominating performance over Super JJ, who had just come out of the loser bracket. So uh, pretty good stuff. What do you expect, Frodan? How do you think these players are open? We've seen a lot of like uh, mirror match openers, and I'm, I'm wondering if that's just coincidence. I've seen a lot of like the double druid openers. I've seen a lot of like the double shaman openers, the double priest openers. It's pretty interesting. I mean, I don't really expect to see <clears throat> these kinds of classes as frequently, uh, classes like priest, but it makes sense. Uh, Dragon Priest has had pretty good success if you anticipate the meta to be a little bit faster. Dragon Priest actually struggles if you anticipate your opponents playing like Handlock and Rogue a lot. Uh, those decks are really good at taking advantage of slow decks that <clears throat> ultimately just don't really do much onto the board. If you can just go for big board clears like Blade Flurry or Shadow Flame and uh, can't really finish the game. Uh, I'm going to put the favor in Oskaka's camp once again. I think Rogue is really good against some of these things of Priest and Warrior, but maybe I'm wrong. I mean, Dragon Warrior is still... One of these unfleshed out decks, uh, people, when it, when it was popular, people still just said it was an inferior version of Control Warrior um, that has slightly better mid game. So I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I, how, how are you feeling about Warrior and how it matches up against Rogue, where traditionally uh, Warrior is strong against Rogue? Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. I feel the warrior is strong against Rogue because of all the, the health bouncing. And while the, the, the Farseers do make an impact, it feels like the rogue doesn't really lose almost anything from not having oil when played that way, and the warrior does lose quite a bit. So that that small margin of extra defense that the warrior doesn't have, uh, I think, makes the matchup very marginal one way or the other. Uh, I mean, you know, you're, you're comparing uh, Shield Maiden basically to Earthen Ring Farseer, and sometimes you use Farseer as as tempo in the early game. You're comparing Twilight Guardians to Belchers, uh, not the same at all. Um, mm -hmm. Often with with a Belcher, the reason you have to sap it is because um, even though you might do very well at killing the the first form, the the, the second form can often stop like a, a huge cold blooded minion from attacking. So. Yeah. Um, these these little things amount to like you know maybe five or maybe like seven hit points throughout an entire game, but that's usually the winning margin that the standard, uh, I mean the typical control warrior that you'd play these days uh, would be winning over. Yeah, uh, one thing to also consider too is like death spite and how that interacted with Violet Teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, Back then, you wouldn't really fear it too much. And nowadays, Wild Teacher seems to be much stronger when you don't have Death Spite. Um, or similarly, Swipe. Doesn't seem that we will see the Rogue to start things off. Uh, we have Warrior from Life Coach, Oskaka on the Druid. And uh, Druid still looking for pretty much the same thing. I mean, it's, it's just one of those classes where 
its plan is going to be very straightforward against Warrior, but yeah. Warrior will always be changing its position. Sometimes it'll go defensive, 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 and all of a sudden it switches to being aggressive, like we saw in the previous series with Life Coach for Soleil. Well, I, I really feel the this is a very one-sided matchup in the Druid's favor, but the um, the G two Warrior has come ahead in this matchup a few times already, so uh, it's certainly not hopeless by any means. Well, you're still looking for these early weapons. Fiery War Axe, not bad. And a couple of dragons with dragon synergy. So it looks like if you can stabilize from the early game, you will have a reasonable amount of mid-game power coming from the warrior. Druid, That's in the a meantime, a couple of really good cards as well. So mm -hmm. who's starting handy like better, Crypt? Well, that's a turn three and a turn four Azure Drake. Um, and the Azure Drake doesn't care about Fiery War Axe, so I think I prefer the the Druids right now. True, used to care about Death Spite, but not the War Axes. Mm -hmm. And Warriors help, help us with doing anything in the early game because it's just hero powering or equipping weapons. It's not proactively getting onto the board without cards like Shield Maiden. Oh, sorry, well, I think, uh, Shield Arbor Smith. Yeah, I think equipping a weapon is still correct here. Um, I mean, we, we've seen that this warrior deck, unlike some of the other warrior decks, does not run King's Defender. So you're you're never going to overwrite the uh, the Fiery War Axe with a better weapon. You just activate it whenever you want. Um, you can you can play it here, and on a later turn when you would actually need it, you could instead armor up then. So I don't I don't see it as a big deal. Um, I don't even see it as a big deal to not attack with a Fiery War Axe, as, uh, again, if you're going to get Harrison, he's going to have to innervate it out. It's not too big of a deal. Goes the armor up instead, though. I guess that is perhaps to pad the uh, uh, the shield slam. Yeah, and also give him coin flexibility in the following turns. But, innervate Azure Dracus into Azure is fine. You might look at like, oh, I'm floating a mana crystal, but you, know, you want to get out of the board. better than doing really. nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is, is this a shield slam? Armor up shield slam is three mana and removal. Mm -hmm. Your opponent innervated uh, an Azure Drake, which makes you believe that he has another five mana minion. It does, or just nothing at all. <laughs> but uh, it does seem more likely than having like a 7 mana minion. I feel it, it'd be a bad idea to play a, uh, a minion though, because the main way that you do innervate out a 5 drop is if you have a bunch of like Wraths and Swipes and those kinds of cards. Like that's what you have to put your opponent on. Okay, uh, I like it. Shield Slam. Just really eliminate this threat immediately. Druid can refill its hand a little bit too. Ooh, interesting. There's a Druid of the Claw, but I think I would prefer to see the Azure Drake. The Druid of the Claw doesn't actually accomplish anything over the Azure Drake. Yeah, but Azure Drake is more vulnerable, again, to stuff. And it also has value as the turns go on. Because you can, like, say if you don't have anything on 7, you can Azure Drake and Wrath. Versus Druid of the Claw, it, it gets really, it's like the strongest it is right now. And then late game, you still have charge abilities too. I mean, that's a, that's also another concern. Like, do you charge Druid the Claw or do you play in Taunt? I think if you're going to charge Druid the Claw, you might as well play in Azure Drake. What to do? Thing is, Drake can still die to like Cool Taskmaster and Fiery War Axe or some combination thereof. I guess it is more resilient to things like Blackwing Corruptor and Bash, though. So. It, it, it feels like there's a lot of debate. You can go back and forth on it a lot. Well, we're certainly what right I about do, that. What I do like about Azure Drake, though, is that it gets out ahead of the board if you want to use Swipe next turn. So if you want to, if you anticipate a 5 health minion, that or 6 health minion in the case of the Twilight Guardian, it might be relevant. But I do like the Drew the Claw player. Now, this is another decision here. He could play the Fiery War Axe and the Alistraza's Champion and lead into uh, Black and Corruptor with the Fiery War Axe next turn. Uh, and that'll definitely uh, put you in a winning position at the end of next turn. Um, if you do play the uh, uh, Twilight Guardian, 
Um, I feel that's a bit more vulnerable. Like with what you've seen from the Druid player, you'd have to assume that two damage is coming and something bad is happening to your Twilight Guardian. I like it. I like setting up the weapon this turn. Blackwing Corruptor gets much stronger the following turn. The Twilight Guardian can get bullied pretty easily, and then you're stuck with like a 4-4 minion, and you're back at square one where it's just like, you don't have the optimal removals. Mm -hmm. So, I, I like Alex Raza's charge. Twilight Guardian it is. Life Coach sees the line, which he optimizes it. The advantage of this is... Um, if this doesn't go down very easily, then yeah, you, know, you can benefit off the Blackwing Corruptor or your weapons. Maybe he doesn't want to take damage. I mean, one of the things to really consider is you just don't really want to leave the board for your opponent to develop stuff and take too much damage. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, the best way to deal with it is actually with the Azure Drake Wrath per two. So I think the best play is actually to Azure Drake and to set up a, a better swipe or swipe plus wrath next turn. What? Yeah, but you're, flo you're floating a mana that way. Force of nature just to get past. Whoa. So he's like, really invested. Really next in level play. We're getting all of them wrong right now. Well, I mean, these guys are really invested into like analyzing the matchup. So what mm -hmm. Oskaka is doing is identifying that this minion, he's saying Life Coach couldn't remove it easily. He had four armor, so if he had Shield Slam, it was very convenient. Uh, and I don't really need this Force of Nature to win. I need strong building board pressure. Uh, he also wants to keep his minions as, as healthy as possible because he knows three health is like a magic number on turn five. Yeah. Um, not just for Blackwing Corruptor, but Bash. So I, I like I like a lot of what he's thinking because this Drew the Claw is still problematic. However, Life Coach does have a way to remove it. He just chose not to. Mm -hmm. So is he going to kill it now, or is he going to once again try to you know be a little bit greedier with it and develop something else instead? I feel this turn is is even harder of a decision. Like the last turn, both the options were pretty good. Feel this turn, all your options are pretty horrible. What now? Oh man, you know Azure Drake disables the Dragon Synergy for Life Coach, and that is a pretty is, big punish. Yeah, that's a it's, huge Wrath play now. Yeah, Wrath or Swipe. I mean, it depends on what you really want to do. The Azure Drake like, gives you the ability to draw. Yeah. Mount Raptor is slightly stickier. But this is really big. Okay, and the, this incremental advantage is really mounting up here. Now with uh, Life Coach on no Dragon Draw, I feel like he's actually in a terrible spot. Yeah, his hand now does a lot of nothing. Like, the <laughs> Alex Draza's charge is nothing more than a 2-3, like a River Crocolis status. His Blackwing Corruptor is no more than a lost Tall Strider. It's just yeah. a series with, of vanilla minions. With the play from last turn, he might be committing himself to uh, a Justicar True Heart, but that's horrible. You know, I was thinking maybe Life Coach for, might have no. overlooked the fact that he was going to lose Dragon Synergy by playing the Azure Drake. Mm -hmm. because or maybe he was willing to wager that fact. Yeah, of like drawing another dragon, but you, you only have two draws to do it. Oh man, and it's because he's held on to this for so long, he might have given up his ability to win back the board and consequently the game. I think maybe he just the force targeted... of nature. Maybe the force of nature really mind game life coach. Oh my god. Yeah, I think he targeted the uh, druid of the claw with the uh, uh, blackwing corruptor, thinking that he had a dragon in hand. <laughs> but you can't even target if you don't have a dragon it just plops down yep yep but uh i'm pretty sure that's what's going on right now yes yeah you know yes. for all the next level minded no, <laughs> for all the next level mind games and reads uh there's also another mistake that balances it out um and right now life coach 
looking pretty frustrated at not only himself but just kind of what happened here because he re- I think if mm. understanding what he had his line of play if he had another dragon maybe there was an option to use it because I think he was going to coin fire your war axe yeah yeah that was definitely the play he was uh, investing in or out <laughs> Crowder's charge e- either way it didn't really matter Scott is kind of baffled too he's like well <laughs> guess I'm just going to swipe and, and pressure here Yep. Seems good. Oh man, you don't even really want to. I mean, you don't want to lose ever, but you don't want to lose like this, Crib. It's oh. a dragon. It's a dragon. Oh, too late. <laughs> oh. Double Alex Straza's charge. Fiery Wolf. Just no good. There's nothing here. You can... Okay, you can fiery war... You can play... Oh, no, you can't. You don't have enough mana. You only have eight mana. I was going to think you play fiery war axe, Alex Strauss's charge with brand bronze beard and then Get you that four yeah but it's just oh, your, man. man i was thinking that too i think we've been like mesmerized by that yeah <laughs> never forget this uh, so no threat of force nature savage war but you've got the next best thing which is the uh the ancient of lore to grab more fuel and to place that heavy five five Is Oskaka evaluating something else, though? I'm pretty sure you, you but want... But he's, he's really played with uh, trying to keep his minions as healthy as possible, so I think maybe he was uh, evaluating worth, whether it's worth it to kill the monkey with the Living Roots and Hero Power. Mm. Yeah, it's a possibility as well. I mean, no, I, I think see he's you evaluating kind of if he wants to keep the four health healthy. And that turns out to be a very good decision with uh, that RNG on the random one drop. Well, the Alex Strauss's charge is still pretty helpful here to remove, but we know that in the grand scheme of things, there's nothing really to stop the Ragnaros from having full impact. So, Life Coach, just going to try to think things through, but I think this one's just wrapped up. I don't think any yeah, it is to change it. No, no, it won't. Um, he has the option to Fiery War Axe the 1 3, and then Bran, Alistraza's champion, <laughs> kill the 4, and then yeah. armor up, and that puts you on 10, which you're still dead to just swipe. <laughs> right. Any, any kind oh, of nine. 4 damage nine. source plus hero yeah. power would be it. But, you know, to do his due diligence, he's going to try to see it out. We've seen pretty crazy comebacks before, Crypt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But well, this one requires one of the one of the crazies you'll see. Mm -hmm. So game one in the books. How does he choose to do it? He can do it with swipe. He can do it with rag. No, you don't. You don't do it with rag. I think if if you have rag in one deck, uh, there might be some chance you have rag in more than one deck. Yeah, that's a good point. You could give information to your opponent that uh, is definitely unnecessary. When you could have hidden that. Uh, swipes in almost every Druid deck, if mm -hmm. not every Druid deck. Well, we did see a Druid opener once again, and Oskaka takes the game with it uh, once again. Not, not too much of a surprise there. Uh, but the other decks are definitely far less consistent, and with, uh, with Life Coach having such a heavy control presence in, uh, in all of his decks, really, uh, it might be a bit of a struggle for Oskaka to seal this one up as well. Back. Um, yeah, the, the, well, we'll see. The Rogue is the interesting X factor here. How does it relate to the Warrior? We've been talking about it. Warrior without Death Spite loses some tools. But, um, I don't know, man. Life Coach seems pretty tilted. He took his glasses off, and he seems very stressed right now. And Oskaka, of course, feeling pretty good about that game. He didn't really make any mistakes. Uh, just playing very straightforward and to his, to his biggest uh, win conditions. All right, Rogue versus Warrior. We'll get to see uh, how this game will work. I do feel like it'll be very, very close. Um, but the Warrior does have a great opener. So I'm maybe leaning towards the Warrior, actually. 
Four hit fire war axe is pretty much as good as it gets early on for Rogue. Rogue has an abundance of three three minions or things that you can pair with three damage to kill things. Uh, no, most notably in the Farseer and the SI. So, um, very good. Whoa, Oops. that hand is bad. Oh my god. How, how do you even draw that badly? Well, it's okay. Just pick up Gadget's hand in the next five turns. This. <laughs> This doesn't he doesn't look dark. like the hand of a world champion. He has he has a, a chance of the Tomb Pillager getting a coin, followed by getting a Gadget Sand. <laughs> yeah. He, he does. Look, it, it's not a great hand at all, but there is that chance. Mm. Don't doubt it. I'm quite a fan of uh, Life Coach's hand here. He's got the, the Shield Slam for the first big threat. He's got the uh, Armorsmith Cruel Task combo. He's got the Fiery War Axe for defense. And the first time we get a dragon, we get that uh, Black and Corruptor. No. And hopefully they'll have a battle cry this time. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully it will. But let's not get let's not get ahead of ourselves, Crip. <laughs> he has to first draw a dragon, you know, before anything else. Mm. Which is how it works, guys. It's not if you have a dragon in your deck, it's uh, if you're holding a dragon. Oh my god. <laughs> well, okay, let, let's, let's also be <laughs> real here. You're not, you're not really doing anything on turns one or two as Rogue, so... No. Still, it's, it's still okay. If he picks up a single three drop, I would say his hand's actually okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, but it is amazing on how bad that hand is right now. Yeah. Oh, well, it's comical, because... The effect of the Tomb Pillager gives you more coins, which is like small preps, you know? Prep coin, that's a good play. Pre yep. Okay, it's something to do instead of re-dagger. I, I would I'm go for the card I'm thinking re-dagger might be better. Think so? Yeah. I kind of want to dig deeper in my deck for stuff. Shiv's yeah, not you, a high impact spell. Right, but ni nothing you do this turn is high impact. So Shiv might just be somewhat useful later on. You have your next few turns kind of kind of planned out, so. Next turn you tomb pillager, the following turn you tomb pillager again. Mm hmm I, I like Shiv. Um just cause again, it's like I can understand if it was some other spell that has a lot of impact on the board, but Shiv is just one damage. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like something you usually want to prep out. Prep fan, prep eviscerate. Um, you know, there's a lot of options that you have with other spells that can really give you impact onto the board. Okay, uh, what do you feel about playing Cool Taskmaster and getting a little aggressive? Is that too is that too much, or would you just armor up pass, or even equip a weapon here? I like it. I like the, the Cruel Task action. The reason why is because you load up reasonable power to challenge whatever comes out next. Mm -hmm. But you can also still do the same thing next turn. What I do like about playing the Fiery War Axe is that you set up a coin Blackwing Corrupted the following turn, but I do like the Quartz Ass Master. I just think that the 3 3 buffed armor smith is actually a ridiculously big threat. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's super overstatted, it gives you a lot of uh, power into trades. Thank you. Uh, Tomb Pillager comes down. Blackwing Corruptor, or even um, even the Fiery War Axe. All viable options here. Mm. Shield, what about Shield Block, Shield Slam? Is that, too, is that too, like, defensive or too slow? Would you rather just get the Blackwing Corruptor out? I'm thinking so. It does get I you mean, deeper into the deck, so you can mm -hmm. get another dragon to play Twilight Guardian. I don't know. What you kind might, of... Mm. You might get enough armor just from the board to, no. to do a Guardian Shield Slam play next turn. Yeah, that's also a possibility as well. 
on five mana, your opponent usually is like playing Azure Drake. So if you do that, your Blackwing Corruptor, in the worst case scenario, gets Azure Drake backstab and the Hero Power Rogue Dagger used to clear it. But you can rebound from that because you have uh, an ability to remove that Drake pretty easily. Oh god, still nothing. Um, I, I mean, Phantom Knives with the Thanos still is something. Um, it does draw you two cards, which is, um, hmm. you know, reasonably close to uh, maybe getting an Auctioneer. And getting an Auctioneer next turn would be incredible. If he's if he's going to go for the I'm in on the Auctioneer play, just why not the Tomb Pillager? <laughs> just go um, all out. Because the Tomb Pillager doesn't draw you any cards, and you want the auction in your next turn. So if you play the, uh, I guess not. But if you play the Thalnos and the Fan of Knives, you draw three cards. You draw three cards in order to actually increase your chances of getting the auction here. It does, but I think the Tomb Pillager stats are just better for fighting back on board. Um, it's gonna besides be a spell for sure here. How much is it? It's oh yeah, you shield slam and then the eleven charge. face <laughs> threatens lethal actually. Threatens lethal? Yeah. I mean, Astraza's champion uh, plus the existing board that pushes for eleven it puts them on thirteen, and then you have Bash and Fiery War Axe next turn. Oh, the Bash! You're right. Oh my goodness, that's pretty funny. Fire War Axe, so it's 8, 11, 13. Yeah, I like that. I must Life Coach is going to take it a little bit slower. One more time, doesn't want to overextend. But if there's anything that we've learned in this format, it's that being aggressive uh, really forces your opponent into an awkward spot because they don't have Sludge Belcher, they don't have Heal Bot, and both those cards are used defensively, and Rogue sometimes has 5 drop minions. Oh! Whoa! Oh! Whoa! To believe, Crip. Damn, well, that is believing. mana available this turn. Five, eight. Wait. Oh, man. He's just going off. Just completely autopilot. Just like going super quick, not even really thinking about it, because he knows that he can run out of time. Yeah, so he just the, the armor smith. Coin conceal, coin prep to get the most mana possible. Backstab's not bad. Another draw, and he can go for the prep fan to draw even more. Oh my goodness. He's drawing his entire deck. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's gonna work. Nine cards good. drawn this turn. Ten if you count the gadgets here. Gadgets in itself. I think I, I really like the fan here. I think he's maybe considering a sap. But, uh, you got to sap a taunt for uh, for the lethal turn. Oh, Van Cleef! Not today. Just a little bit too late. Oh man. But that's not a lot of damage in hand. There's no way he's doing like 35 next turn. There's zero chance of that. But actually, the Warriors is probably going to win this game. Three. You can do there's nine no, next turn. Yeah, it's not even close. What now? You mean the Rogue? Yeah, the Rogue's not even close to lethal. Yeah, but the, the Warrior isn't either because the Farseers. Mm, yeah, well, that's kind of true. Like the warrior damage, can only do nine at one point, and this is where life coach got you know a little bit punished for not setting up that lethal. Yeah, he could have put him on eight, and then if his opponent was at eight, he could have put him on two this turn, and I think he would have won a hundred percent. But I, I still think the the warrior, if you play aggressively, uh, still has a good chance here. Well, he's running out of time. What are you gonna do, life coach? I'm gonna play Armor Smith. Get to work with the weapon. I mean, base. one weapon is. Elstar's champion. Weapon. No! Uh. He has enough mana to do Alex champion next turn. Right, but it misses an attack here, doesn't it? I guess you're anticipating it dying either way because of the gadget's in. 
-hmm. and like blade flurries and stuff. Yeah, okay. a lot of minions. Seven minions out of ten cards. <laughs> Some miracle deck, huh? So many. You can't even open up with Shiv, by the way. Can't do that. You have to open up with a minion. So I guess you might as well play Farseer and concede that you will not be winning this turn. You'll have to set up a two-turn lethal. He has another conceal in the deck, I believe. Yeah. Hmm. I don't mind sapping. Yeah, I don't mind sapping to draw and start things off. Definitely want to farce here. Wow, what a waste. Does that mean you shiv? Oh my goodness. Just gonna dagger oh, shiv up. Is, shiv is not good either. I think you have to dagger up. Or you have blood mage. Yeah, this is fine too. Just gotta get it out there. Warrior has 9 damage right now. No. <laughs> Just not enough. Like, hypothetically, if you could just put all that damage in one package, it'd be great. Hmm. So then what do you do now? What There's now? 8, 9, 12 on the board. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Plus the Blade Flurry is... 22, so he's still not dead. 20, 23, even. Yeah, but he. I'm sure he has another blade. Uh, he has another deadly poison in the deck, and I think he's played zero of his rates. So I think if the Gadgen stays alive, the warrior is definitely dead. But uh, Life Coach. Tough call. Life Coach obviously assumes that. I, I think Life Coach is going to make the correct, uh, correct maneuvers here to kill the Auctioneer. Not. He's trying to go for a sneaky lethal. He's trying to go for an eight mana fiery war axe. Alex draws his charge bash. Okay. Except he's going to get some bad news about the second farseer, because your opponent didn't kill a three three minion with a fiery war axe, which is like I mean that match percentage for the for like for a dating profile fiery war axe and a 3-3 is like 99%. So <laughs> the fact that he didn't actually kill it is pretty telling that he has like a base plan to to win the game. So I would be very surprised if it was Kaka didn't go for a far seer play. Oh wow, that's such a bad draw. <laughs> second <laughs> second gadget stand. He has a cold blood. I'm really curious if he has a charger finisher. We still haven't seen anything like it. But with two conceals and a cold blood, maybe maybe he doesn't have it at all. He's just all in on the minion plan. Mm -hmm. Life coach is still so close, but so far, variant rent is nothing. It's oh my goodness. Yeah, now he has to he has to kill the auctioneer to stay alive. The Earthen Ring Farseer crit. That the, the, is card, the card that's been carrying like the whole G2 deck arsenal <laughs> coming back and killing their warrior. <laughs> yeah, Oskaka bringing the double Farseer, which makes sense. You know, when you usually you cut a Farseer for five drops, you cut you know the extra spells. But in this case, Oskaka is getting away with playing Gadget Sand Rogue, and he doesn't even necessarily have any blatant. Super miracle finishers from what it looks like. It's just minions and gadget sands. Oh man, that feels really bad. Oh my goodness. And he's gonna have to clear the gadget sand, but it's too late. The damage has been done. I think I think there's no way that he stays alive. Uh, four, this nine, eleven. I count fourteen. Oh wait, sixteen damage. Does he have enough mana to do that? Three, yeah, so. five, seven, ten mana. I count ten mana to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, what if he uh, Drake? Drake is so six. Uh, it's, it's easy lethal. It's not even. It's not even ten mana. Don't you need a dagger and? De oh wow! Now you do the second of this right? I think seven, one was enough. Okay, well, that wraps it up uh, to remove any doubt. Okay. 
done game. Man, I really feel if uh, if Life Coach was more of an aggressive player, uh, he would have set up an opportunity to close out that game. Um, I can't really fault can't really fault his plays too much because you know he was expecting the worst. He was just playing super defensively, um, just in order to survive anything. It did happen that Oskaka had like zero burst. He had like every single minion in his entire deck drawn from his Gadsden combo. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah. Oh well, I guess we'll move on to another game here. Oskaka is on his final his final deck, his final point here. These players are playing to advance directly into tomorrow's final. Yeah, the winner of this goes on to be the fifth player guaranteed, or sixth player, excuse me, guaranteed a spot in the grand final. Remember guys, tomorrow we're playing a single elimination bracket all the way through, no deck resubmissions. Um, Lepronome, Totem Golem, Two pretty good cards. Even Feral Spirit to uh, with, when you're on the coin is okay because you can Lepra Gnome, Totem Golem, coin Feral Spirits. Or if you sense that your opponent's going to play Aspirant, you can coin Totem Golem, play Lepra Gnome, and then Feral Spirits. Uh, mm -hmm. All of those are very good lines. So I, I like keeping the right three minions for Oskaka. Okay. Well, he's, he's taking his time. These are two very, very methodical players. Hmm. I wonder what the merit is for having Sir Finley and the timing of it. A lot of times against Druid, you just you just want to get damage. You don't really care about life tap as much. But we saw that there are some really unique cases of using Finley effectively. Um, Zolay picks Paladin hero power over the Hunter one and Druid one. Because uh, he wanted to build the board. Mm -hmm. Alright. Turn one Totem Golem. Uh, it's pretty good because it crushes just about everything, but that right. does not include Violet Teacher. Mm -hmm. the, the, Actually, the it does. Rock Biter. Yeah. yeah. You were hunting Aspirants, and you got a Violet Teacher, but you do have that Rock Biter, like you're saying, so... You gotta do it. You gotta do it here. You are so heavily punished by playing something else, because mm -hmm. the Wrath... Uh, it gives another 1-1 one, one token, which makes things like the Arch and Horse Rider worse, too. And the Leopard Gnome. All right. Much needed well, trade. Good trade from the Shaman. Would you hero power this in Conservation of Wrath? Or would no, you this, is, this is three damage. I think at three damage, you you start Wrath. And, you know, we had the discussion about two damage earlier. Um, oh, what an amazing draw. Wow. That's perfect. That's the best draw. Yeah, it is. Mm, here we'll have to fer Feral Spirits. I mean, there's there's no way you're dropping one drops and and that kind of junk against army at one ones, especially going into a four uh, turn four play. My goodness. Some of these draws, like, right on time have a pretty big impact on stuff, you know, like that Gadgetson Auctioneer right on time. And getting able to squeeze into Living Roots is a pretty big deal. Although right now the Pharaoh Spirits puts a big halt into those plans. I like the um the play where you play the Darnassus Aspirant and kill off one of the Feral Spirits. Yeah, you protect your Darnassus by doing this as well, which if you play Druid the Claw next, you might have an opportunity to hit 7 mana very quickly. And I mean, I think you're really starting to see the effects and impacts of not having a Dr. Boom and Druid, because sometimes one of the best ways to catch up is to be super aggressive with like a Dr. Boom, and your aggro can't trade into it. Draw. It's perfect! Yeah, oh, abusive sergeant. Okay. Do you want to play Leopard Gnome? It's more damage on the board. Mm. Or do you want to play uh, Sir Finley Murgleton? I think there's there's a case for not actually killing the Aspirant this turn because um, there's only one minion on six mana that you're scared of, and that's Emperor. You're not really enabling much. Actually, I take it back. You would get completely annihilated by a Savage Combatant. I okay, it's time to abuse. <laughs> It's true, Savage Combatant is in almost every deck as the the first 
the first string replacement for a pilot shredder. I guess I would make it a second string, but. Lepronome with the Abusive Sergeant. The most damage onto the board, I agree with it. The yep. Sir Finley is just a good thing to do to fill out your mana. The stats aren't terribly impressive as the game progresses. Where is your swipe, life coach? I feel this is just going to be a very sad Druid of the Claw. Yeah, or, you know, which just emulates his, his, his trainer. I mean, Life Coach is looking really sad right now. <laughs> just kind of like going through all the stuff. But, uh, you know, taking a look at the Druid of Claw versus the Azure Drake, Druid of Claw is just more stats onto the board. You can try using Farseer, but I think Farseer is also still good next turn. Versus Drew the Claw gets very awkward the f this turn. Because you can always use Farseer to like heal your your minion or your phase, and it gives you more options. I actually kind of like Farseer a decent amount. It does challenge the board about as much as Drew the Claw does. But if you taunt in front of an injured minion, you usually get a lot of nice value from that play. Yeah, that's also a good point. Regardless, uh, looks pretty good still. Well mostly for the Shaman. Yeah, I mean, the Shaman still has a lot of leverage with, like, Sir Finley and ancient Ancestral Knowledge. It might draw damage from sources that's not existent. Oh, my God, the three worst ones. Hmm. Well, you know, uh, Dagger Mastery sometimes isn't too, too bad because it's, like, two damage for two mana, but... Oh, yeah, man, with, with the really Doomhammer being a consideration, it's, it's generally... Uh, Generally, a better one. Yeah, those. I think those are absolutely the worst three. Yeah, you'd much rather have life tap, um, shape shift, and steady shot. Those are the hunter, the uh, the druid, and the warlock ones. And then in the middle tiers are like paladin and shot. I wonder what the chances are to get the worst three hero powers all at the same time. That's pretty horrible. Yeah, I don't actually know um, off the top of my head, but he picks the rogue dagger just so he can get that extra damage as a, as a ping. You know, and it's dangerous because the more you use the rogue hero power, you, know, you never know if Druid ever flips the tables and just goes ahead and use Force of mm -hmm. Nature Savage to win the game. All right, well, I did some quick math. I believe it's roughly 17%. You get exactly three. Wow. The three worst, that is. Which is not that bad. I thought it'd be much lower than that. But maybe my math sucks. No, we're, we're just going to believe you because you're totally like the rain man right now. Mm. But um, either way, that's just unlikely. So I like I mean, the... Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I like the, uh, the play where you conserve Wrath here. Just the, It gives you another option with the Azure Drake. You can possibly wrap to draw a card and kill something bigger. I like the keeper on the taunt and hero power on the two one. I must save card. Yep. Taking it just pretty slow. Typical life coach format, uh, or sorry, turn here. Um, and in this format, you really have to just be really cautious of like what the shaman can do. Doomhammer on five mana available. Yeah. yeah. I would say no. I think You'd it's better. No? I think it's better to play the other two cards. You can you can kill the board and you could draw the cards and you can still be on five mana next turn. But you missed the four damage. Okay, I guess you do miss the four damage. Let's go do hammer. Yep. Oh. Okay, well Skaka agrees with you. And worry, it could be one of those things where if you play the, I mean, if you play the Doom Hammer right now, he feels like maybe he can't get the damage in with the Arch and Horse Rider, and he wants to get value out of that first before there's like a big minion or like a bunch of small minions to challenge it. Because Doom Hammer will still do four damage whether now or later. Yeah. All possibilities. Mm, again, not much for options, by the way. Drake can pick up some options as well. I mean, you you can clear board. 
No, the clear is horrible though, but yeah. It is. But I, I think I, I do like Azure Drake as well. Hmm, I wonder. He's gonna wrath okay. for one, try to get uh, a better option. That is that is a great option. That's for next turn. Um for now you can probably just use your hero power, right? I don't know about that. You want to just activate it still? Yeah, I, I think you, you would never use your hero power. Actually, I think if you didn't play the Azure Drake, you'd heal yourself in Living Roots for two one ones. I don't think the two one ones are entirely relevant. You don't have set. You don't have Savage Roar, and it might be better to use as removal. But uh, I can see where you're coming from. This is an interesting card. Look at this. Tuscar Jouster. Oh wait, no, sorry. Tuscar Totemic. Yeah. <laughs> well, he does. He does kind of joust. Yeah, it's it's it has a <laughs> similar effect of the joust, where you're very happy or miserable. You know, it's, yeah. it's a polarizing joust effect. <laughs> so, well it attributed. Has the joust of the innkeeper, and it shows yeah. you the final result. The All knife right. juggler with the Tuscar Jouster is the dream. Get the flame tongue totem for the ultimate value. And we get the correct positioning there. We want to put the oh. uh, potential, potential totem, uh, potential flame tongue totem, uh, in right. the right spot beside the one attacker. Well, this is a damn good swipe. Yeah, really this good. This might be the turning point of the game. Five damage to face. Far you to get out of that range, and Oskaka is punished. I. Uh, I would say Living Roots now definitely should go out here as minions. Unless you're afraid of elemental destruction. I mean, he's been he's been burned once before, Crip. It is pretty By traumatic. LD. <laughs> that card can be so traumatizing, it, you, you can never actually play around it. Hmm. Yeah. Wonder. How I do could, you... I could not play cards in order to play around this one card. <laughs> I mean, it's the same matchup, though, so ultimately you understand it, but... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, some damage. Time to Doomhammer and see what you got. This is Doom absolutely Hammer. the time to Doomhammer. So, six to the face. But Life Coach has not only taunt, but he also has heal. Yeah, it's... so far from actually being over. Well, it's actually the, it's over the other way, like... Mm -hmm. Druid's gonna kill Shaman way before Shaman's killing Druid. There is a way to win this game, and that is ancestral knowledge into ancestral knowledge, <laughs> and get an Earth Shock and two Rock Biters. Yeah. No, he's yeah. already used the Rock Biter, didn't he? He's a Rock Biter to kill a Vile Teacher. Yep. So okay. if he has one rock biter and one lightning bolt. Um, well, the minion's never not never gonna stay alive. It'll have to be a rock biter, lava burst. But he doesn't have enough mana to do that. Yeah, though. there's not enough mana to do that. Mm. Yeah, it looks like this is uh, life coach's game here. It's got to be some serious slip ups for that to to change. I think. Hex. That's a hex. What? Oh, we saw that earlier. The hex. Wow. Weird stuff, man, but I mean Looks pretty dead still. Yeah. It like is inconsequential. Yeah. Oh. He had lethal anyways, but just to show the top deck, I like it. Alright, well life coach books. will not be swept today. That's right. He's gotta go through for the G two boys, because RDU lost and the losers. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's the case if, if Life Coach loses here, he has to face RDU, right? Or does no, he? No, the, the loser of this match will be playing Firebat uh, right afterwards. And then I believe after that, we will have Super JJ uh, face off against RDU. So, yeah, it was, it was my mistake. I didn't quite know how the, the, the matchups were set, okay. but it looks like they are uh, coincidentally rigged against G2 playing against each other. <laughs> Good. Good and Archon as well. Huh. 
I mean, I think it's because those are the only two teams that have multiple members up. A lot, there's a lot of like one member representatives, like Oskakas from Navi, and um, actually, no, that's not true. We have two Cloud Nine members, but they happen to be on opposite side of the brackets as well. So it just seems like in general, teams have been separated so that way they don't get team kills, which would be understandable because you know, you, as much as it's cool to see preparation across the lineups, you don't want to. Face yeah. off against your teammate and just have the dragon priest play against each other. Yeah, it is. It is pretty disappointing. So it's good that that is avoided. Yep. So far, though, uh, G two is definitely uh, the team to catch up to. Um, I mean, looking at the the teamwork of things, and in this tournament more than most others, uh, it seems to be a very relevant factor. Uh, G two has uh, stepped up their game. Uh, I don't. I don't believe any Archon players have actually qualified for the final day. And G2 might actually have three, all of them. Well, Amnesiac did qualify yesterday. Oh, that's right, my mistake, my mistake. Yeah, yesterday we had Tice, Strife Crow, Amnesiac, and uh, let me pull up the one final player, uh, Trump qualified, so. Mm -hmm. Cool stuff all around. Uh, we had some really good matches yesterday, uh, and today has been very fun so far. Wonder if this goes on to day three to win up to twelve thousand five hundred dollars, uh, and you know honestly, I think now that we've identified a lot of what the the current decks have with standard, I'm pretty excited to see the new coming cards of how it fits in. I'm really excited uh, from, to see Druid nerfed into the ground personally. You you don't want to see Druid for a while. Okay, I'll, I'll, I will rephrase my statement. I'm really excited to see. Hopefully, the combo being nerfed into the ground. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. uh, what if Druid's consistency of getting the combo is, is nerfed more than the combo itself? Because there are some ridiculous damage combos that exist in the game for a similar amount of cards. Yeah, it's just so the flexibility and the ability to ramp and all that stuff and the simplicity of the combo using cards that are also both good independently which is generally not the case with other combos. Um, I think overall pushes it a bit a bit too much. And I think there's there's just no doubt about that uh, based on the evidence that we see in this tournament. Sure, sure. I'm not uh, completely disagreeing with you. Just kind of trying to play the other side. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of the other side, the, the Priest has a pretty strong o opening here with having the turn one Twilight Whelp. Again, the night and day difference between having a one drop and not uh, yeah, and then to follow it up, Crip, there is an Earthen Ring Farseer to bring back that Twilight Whelp and establish some board tempo. Again, being another huge MVP early on. Yeah, certainly looks that way. The, um, the, ooh, that also kind of works, mm -hmm. but I feel, I feel that is more likely to be punished. Um, I would prefer the Earthen Ring Farseer healing the Whelp and getting the attack in. Uh, yeah. Uh, you want to attack the Totem Golem or attack the face? Attack the Totem Golem, right? So that way, whatever attacks, it, it, it trades really poorly in? Hmm. Maybe not, actually. Maybe attack face is the play. No, attack the Totem Golem. Yeah, attack the it, Totem Golem. It'd be a 2-2, two -two, and there's not, like... There, it, even if it had a juggle, which... Because you know it has access to coin, it'd it still be pretty awkward. Sick. So I think the 2-2 two -two is still... Relevant enough to challenge everything, and yeah, I, I, I think that's definitely more appropriate. There is some, there is something to note that um, you know, you you can play the Wormrest Agent and the Hero Power next turn, so that's like pretty efficient. Although you, okay, I didn't see, I didn't really notice you, sir. You can always play Twilight Guardian just for itself too. For some reason, I thought Twilight Guardian wouldn't activate. Um, there's a little bit of a punish here, but it isn't, uh, it isn't big. I think the coin Feral Spirits is probably the best you're gonna get, and killing off the three three, so your Feral Spirits are protected. What to do? Yep, your next turn you have four mana, so you can't play Doomhammer anyways. Um, and then you can have Doomhammer ready, which is one of those really funny scenarios. Once again, we mentioned Harrison on a Doomhammer, only to be followed up by another Doomhammer. Uh, does Do you have enough resources to stop Doomhammer number two? But the thing is, if you kill a Doomhammer on curve, 
they can't doom him in the following turn because they'll be overloaded. Mm -hmm. So you do get ahead of that. Plus the Harrison body is no joke. It can help you really control the state of the board and even raise. Yeah, I, I didn't quite notice how doomed the shamans are. With the <laughs> It's so it's so devastating, but it's not impossible to win. I, I've seen people win from that position. Just one of the difficulties is that again, priest gets so many cards available to it that it doesn't matter what they um, what what they what they really do on the board. They'll just have so many answers on on the hand. But that was back when they have like a lot of AOEs that are more consistent. And, you know, they have like. Twilight Guardian Valence chosen to make an Ancient of War and you can't get through. Now it's a little bit different. Alright, well here we go. It's going to be another uh, set of tons of stats in the way. Yeah. Uh, five mana, 14 stats. I think this attack is probably worth making with the whelp. Right? It just puts a dent that you're, you're going to want in there. I mean, there's there's no way the the Feral Spirit is going to attack a 3-5 and kill itself. It's either going to attack nothing or a 2-attack minion. Hmm. But I think you gain tempo by initiating the attack. In this case, at least. It's worse against Elemental Destruction, though. But that's about it. Wow. You think that's what he's playing around? <laughs> oh, man. I don't the, think The trauma is real? I don't think so. That, that would be a little absurd at this point because if you if your opponent elemental destruction, you still have board initiative. But uh, it could be it could be a factor. Is this a turn of Doomhammer? He doesn't have to. He can play knife juggler and feral spirits instead, but that limits him from playing Doomhammer for two turns this turn and the next one. Mm -hmm. He also has two Doom Hammers, so he might be considering that he has to start getting working eventually. If he Doom Hammers, he can also get past the Wormrest Agent with the weapon to preserve health on his minions. But that ultimately is moot because of the 3 5. So. Yeah, that's very poor. I think if you do use Doom Hammer to do minion damage, you would only attack the 2 4 one time. You'd think you'd do the second attack with a 2 3. Yep, because totally with, fair in my books. Yeah, with, with two Doom Hammers. Um, if you win, you know you're not going to end up with much health in the end. Oh, he's playing around the Harrison. He knows what's coming. It's a possibility. He's going to use Feral Spirits and lock himself. And I guess he's just going to follow the Ancestral Knowledge Train. He's going to use it next turn to try to draw some cards and get an opportunity to win the game. It seems like all these shamans in general, when they realize Harrison Jones is a real is a real threat, they just don't play the Doomhammer. Yeah. They wait for the rock biter so that way they can get 16 damage in. The repercussions of waiting are pretty big though. I must consider. Yeah, by not playing it, um, well, first of all, like we said, when you're not playing it next turn, but next turn you're also going to play Ancestral Knowledge most likely, which means you only have five mana the following turn after that. Which means that Doomhammer getting Harris, you won't even have the opportunity to use Rockbiter unless you uh, somehow Lava Shock on uh, six mana turn. It's a lot of like these mana plays and planning that requires the deck to make sure that you're not just autopiloting and just doing whatever all the time. You, you do have to be very cautious at times that you might give yourself. There's one Rockbiter. There is one Rockbiter, but if. You play Ancestral Knowledge, you can't play the Rockbiter with the Doomhammer next turn. Yeah. You can... I like a Lightning Bolt, though. Bolt. Lightning yeah. Bolt the 3-2? Yeah, Lightning Bolt on the 3-2 and get a easy trade on the 2-2. Two, two. I like then that. Then you get 4 mana. Huh. <laughs> Just never play Doomhammer. Hmm. Well, obviously not never. You have a chance to do it. But, you know, I think Kalos Kaka is going to set up, like, Doomhammer and then force a Harrison Jones, followed by a Doomhammer Rockbiter finish of some kind. I mean, that that would be a pretty sneaky way to, to lethal your opponent. He also gets a Taunt Minion, which... Oh, never mind. He's not He's not killing. He's not trading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, he's, he's looking at his hand. He's like, that's a lot of damage. I'm going for it. Yeah. 
Priest gonna start picking apart the trades. Wormrest Agent, Blackwing Technician, all of them heal. Uh, I mean, I, I love a lot of the plays here. I would probably play, I'll probably get the heal in. And I would also debate healing myself. Because. I think I think here you actually do play around Elemental Destruction, by the way. I think if you're ever traumatized by that card right now is where you play around it a little bit. By not playing, the, uh, what, the 3-5 or something or what? I, I, at least the Twilight Whelp. I think you have to heal instead of playing a Twilight Whelp. It's, or it's just going to be a disaster once again. I would heal. I'll hit my own face. It's clear that yeah. he ignored a very easy trade for a board position to go face, so it might mean that his hand's very aggressive. And if so, then you just put yourself out of range. You got 21, sure, but it's still not the most safe thing in the world. And Life Coach recognizes it, goes for the heal. Burn the rope all the way down. Oh, God. All right. Well, overload is a big problem this game for Oskaka. Yeah, if he had access to every mana... Oh, and Life Coach is jumping for joy now. Is he? Let's see. No, no, he's not yeah. jumping for joy. But is his yeah, jumping for I joy see on the, the inside? Excitement. <laughs> his eyes are opening wide. Hello, Harrison Jones. Yeah, it's it's pretty much uh, from this point on, you're gonna be killing your opponent. You have. Seven, eight, uh, seven, ten, and then next turn you just got lethal on board. Even heal yourself if you're super unsure of things. I would definitely heal myself here, but I you think I would uh, put a power word shield on the Azure Drake, along with a heal, because uh, with with two holy smites, uh, the, the shaman's going to have to remove a lot of minions. Playing around at almost destruction this way. Oh, I see. Probably. I like the heal yourself play. Again, he's interpreting his hands very aggressive. That is 5, 11, 15 damage. So if he kills the Drake, he thinks he's alive. Yeah, but there's... I mean, Oskaka has to take this risk because he's so far behind. But it's obviously not going to work out. And he's going to get crushed by uh, this completely full hand of life coach. It's just so nuts how big the Harrison makes this huge difference in this matchup. Without mm -hmm. it, you're so so vulnerable to the Doom Hammer. Mm -hmm. You can't really stop whatsoever. All right, go game number five. Life Coach once again being down zero two. And he's back it up pretty here. big. And take it all the way, being a comeback kid. I don't know. It's uh, one of those things where. You look at the warrior versus the shaman, and we've seen one-sided games where the shaman blew past that warrior very quickly. Yeah. Um, but on paper, warriors should be really good against handling the aggro. So it should be. Uh, it comes down to getting those few early game uh, counter plays. Fiery War Axe being a great one. Uh, Elstra as a champion being a great one. And I think Armor Smith and maybe a Cruel Task are the only missing ingredients here. Um, I'm I'm curious if Life Coach will throw some of these back though. Because uh, sometimes I've noticed a lot of these players look for very specific cards. So like, I wouldn't be too surprised to see him just keep the War Axe in order to maximize the chance to get like an Armor Smith. Because what, what the Fiery War Axe doesn't deal with are like one health garbage minions. And that's exactly what an Armor Smith would complement with. Right, the Lepernome, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, Alex Draws a Champion also can deal with some of those one health garbage. But it needs a Dragon to activate. Yeah. Bash is also a reasonable keep. If you're going to coin two, two, you Bash gives you a, a three mana option to do something. So I guess the process elimination is if you feel like trading one shield block is good enough to get a chance for a dragon, or if you want to get another dragon chance, you throw away Bash as well. All right, well, Lepronome comes down. Um, hmm. Oh, no dragon. I still think you coin Alex Draws as champion, though. It looks pretty good, but I mean, one damage from a shaman is is nothing. So I don't I don't know if it's going to work so well. One damage from a shaman. Yeah. What now? 
Uh, can you elaborate? Well, we've seen a lot of like flame jugglers, and even if he plays the two three, it might just get uh, you know lightning bolted. Uh, there's just a lot of bad stuff that can happen with that. And what I've noticed is when when you make like a kind of like a greedy play like that uh, and get punished, you're usually like blown out. Um, the lepronome is going to get uh, two more damage, for instance, if if that does happen. Like, I would not be surprised to see the fiery war next year. I would also not be surprised to see it pass. Fiery War Axe still has a lot better presence over whatever gets played next. I think the champion is good at absorbing the damage. Mm -hmm. And as such, on the Shaman side, you want to use the Totem Golem. Just to, because you don't really want to use the Ancestral Knowledge till later stages of the game. You can also use Ancestral Knowledge next turn, um, because you have two mana, but you can't flip it the other way. You can't play Ancestral Knowledge and Totem Golem. So... Let's see the draw. Oh, it's a dragon. <laughs> a little bit short, but it's okay. You just lose two health because of the damage on the the extra attack damage is not really relevant for the champion. Equip the fire war axe. Would you hit the totem golem? Oh my god! I feel like if you do that, it's like the beginning of the end. <laughs> it's not the beginning of the end. It just it just feels double really doom bad. hammer again. Oh, that's horrible. It's as if tunnel trucks don't even exist for Ostkaka. Has he even seen one, like, anywhere? That or uh, he's playing more cop more than two copies of Doomhammer. He draws both of them in the opening hand both games. That's pretty unlikely. Calculate that for me, Crip. Quickly. 7.35%. Hmm. And that is really unlikely. <laughs> I just completely made that up. I have no idea. I know that uh, if you go first, the chance to get a specific card is like around 30. And what going second, now? if you mulligan every card in order to get a specific card, it's a little bit over 40. Right. They said it's a little under 50% um, to get wild growth on turn two if you're on the coin. Mm -hmm. so, that sounds about right. Do you? I mean, you can bash this. Keep your charge, or if not your charge, your champion up. I, don't I mind like that the bash. Much. Yeah, I like the bash a lot. Because you're going to be playing turns four, five, six. It's all mapped out for you. Yeah. Okay. You don't. You don't really need. A, you don't really need a, a guidance counselor for that. You've got your path to success all mapped out right in front of you. Let's do it. Show that totem golem who's boss, and start hitting the face with your own champion. And very soon, because your opponent spent his entire turn drawing cards and overloading, you also have the ability to start pressuring him because you have more minions and he has to respond to those minions because things like taunt are in the way. Mm. This turn is so rough for us, Kaka. I really feel like the um, the lead and, and the, the match is just slipping through us, Kaka's fingers on the back of horrible draws. Like what? What is he supposed to do here? Oh, I mean, that there. I mean, I guess that was answered very easily. Toed him up and try to get the one one, which he did. Best yeah. case. One one's not bad in this scenario. You don't. You don't want to earth shock a two one minion. You can't draw because you have to play a doom hammer. You have to play a doom hammer because there's two of them in your hand again. <laughs> right. I mean, what do you do? Okay, Sir Finley's not the worst. Either because you still, if you doom hammer, you can't even do anything else this turn. You're not going to attack twice into that. So let's see what Sir Finley grabs too. See who's down for an adventure. Wow, the shapeshift might be pretty good. With the doom hammers. Yeah, I mean you're going to be spending your mana on doom hammers, and you have ancestral knowledge, so maybe the direct damage is better with the shapeshift. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's better now. He gets to kill the two one. Oh yeah, you're right. Threat off the board. Not bad at all. Yeah, that was very well played by Oskaka. Blackwing Corruptor, though, gonna definitely try to fight back on board. Would you spend the the last charge of the weapon to kill off a Absolutely. small one attack? 
Absolutely. Oh, well, now you have the weaponsmith, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you you need you need all the shaman's minions to go away. <laughs> yep, minions are but, not allowed. <laughs> well, no, no shaman minions are allowed. Okay, yeah. Warrior warrior minions are cool though. They're chill. Of course, uh, life coach not allowed to do anything for another fifteen or twenty seconds or so. Oh my god. This this plays this plays very easy, isn't it? Um, I mean, I'm. There is merit to a bash, I guess, but I think the Blackwing Corruptor is the, the better play by a big margin. Yeah. Just because bash does the same thing as Blackwing Corruptor, but for two more mana, you get to develop a five four. So. All right. Well, we know what time Let's it is. Let's get to work. It's Doom Hammer in time. And next turn, it's Draw Rock Biters right away time. You have Ancestral Knowledge, which gives you the chance to draw the Rock Biters, maybe even two Rock Biters. Actually, if he draws two Rock Biters and the Lightning Bolt, that's lethal. So now here's something that Life Coach will take his time evaluating. Should he bash to try to stay alive, or should he play Emperor Thor soon? Thorsen puts 12 damage onto the board. You do no, 7. I don't think you, no, I think the Weaponsmith is better than the Emperor. Weaponsmith? Yeah, because you get the armor up. And it's, it yeah. pushes for 5 damage as well. And you don't have more than 3 turns anyway. So who cares? It's true, but it's, um, you still can die. Mm. Just have to be careful with like how much you're going. But I do like this. It's halfway. It's, it's between the the safest and the the most aggressive. Four. So he has six, eleven damage right now. He's one off lethal. Uh, the, uh, sorry, life coach is one off lethal on the shaman. Oh, 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 oh! I thought the shot. You're saying the shaman's one off. Hmm. Would I guess you can also let lava burst defensively and get six. Damage this turn, another twelve. Rock biter. There's one of them. So close. He's going for wow, it. Wow, maximum risk. Wow. He's saying this is the best chance I have to win right now. Twelve damage to the dome. One damage off lethal for for life coach. And the most he can bounce up to is ten. And. 10 damage is actually 10 is actually not enough. Oh, oh that's goodness. lethal. He that's drew. lethal. Cool Taskmaster. Life coach top decks lethal as the control warrior. <laughs> wow. He's going to end Oskaka's run here in the winner's bracket. Uh, the fastest turn that life coach has taken all tournament long. It was exact lethal because we forgot the druid armor. They gave it yep. plus one. So that ends up being the exact case. What a series. For life coach, for uh, you know, first of all, he had to delay to start things off with that madness, and then he had to come back from that. And then yep. this series, he started Two off full he recoveries. Was making, he was making some pretty bad errors with the uh, the Blackwing Corruptor, uh, but able to really stabilize and advance three to two, technically undefeated in the winners bracket, um, which is also good news because then he avoids guys like Tice uh, as mm -hmm. well. So we'll see. Uh, congratulations to life coach. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, coming up, uh, we will have Oskaka playing once again. He'll be playing against Firebat, who uh, did lose his opening game, but came through the uh, loser's bracket to uh, go into the deciders match, which we are getting to uh, here in just a few minutes. And uh, right after that, we will have Super JJ versus RDU. These will be the final two games of, uh, of the night, and the winner of each one will advance to the top eight for tomorrow. All right, guys, so we want to give a big shout out to our sponsors as well, to uh, Geek Fuel, the Curse Network, to Hearthpone, uh, and the Innkeeper uh, deck manager thing that's going around. Uh, just make sure to check that out. It's to help you guys um, sync your card collection so that way you can continue to keep track of your decks as you're building them and whatnot. Uh, it's a cool little neat little tool. Check it out while we take a break. When we come back, we're going to have our seventh match of the day. Uh, to wrap things up, we're hopping to a lower bracket, so... Stay tuned.